Hey, what's going on ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we're going to take a look at every single all-out warfare map in Battlefield 2042 since we are not going to get any other map in this game and 15 maps, 15 all-out warfare maps are the only maps that this game has and we are going to rank them today in a tier list with only four tiers. We've got perfect tier, decent tier, average and disaster. I didn't think we could actually get another tier between average and disaster. All of these maps are either going to be average or disaster. There's no middle line really between them. Because as a lot of you guys know, so many of 2042's maps are not actually made for Conquest 64. They're made for Conquest and Breakthrough 128 players and because of that there are so many spaces without cover and so many of these maps are not really even average but for the sake of this video there is an average tier actually and we are going to rank these maps there are some actually decent and perfect maps as well that we are going to talk about them but generally speaking 2042 is just known for dull maps let's call it like that and move on before you get into the video, if you guys enjoy the content, if you watch these videos regularly, this channel is for you. Make sure to subscribe to the channel because it only takes one click and you won't be missing out on the future videos. And a quick disclaimer here, guys. This tier list is completely based on my own experience in 2042 and it's just my taste in 2042's maps, okay? You as Battlefield players can have different opinions and the comment section is your place to go down there. Comment down below, share your thoughts. And we're going to have a discussion down there. Maybe the conversation gets hot and we learn a few things from each other, right? So make sure to do that if you have like different opinions on a topic like the tier list. So let's get started. The first map we have here is Breakaway. Breakaway, in my opinion, is just an average map. I just wouldn't like to call it decent because in my opinion, D and E objectives are just completely out of the game. There is so much distance between D and E to C and the other objectives, which are A and B. On the other hand, A and B are just closer to C site, and that makes it easier to navigate between those sites. But even if you really want to just play in D and E, you're gonna be just hanging around in a very small space, and it really doesn't feel like a conquest game mode. Most of the times, especially E site, is the place for snipers and people who tend to camp and snipe people in long ranges and that's something that really happens a lot in this map and those two sites are completely disconnected from the entire map on top of that there are so many empty spaces around these two sites and that kind of makes the map to feel like a bit dull for a conquest game mode we're looking at it from the perspective of, of someone who actually plays conquest which is the main game mode of battlefield and yeah because of that average tier next up we've got the discarded i wouldn't say discarded is a perfect map because again well, we have so many empty spaces without cover especially from a to other sites like to from a to b there is an open terrain a big open terrain without a single cover there's just rocks around and nothing more however you can actually feel that you are playing conquest in c sector and b sector the fight in those sectors is really immersive i would say because there's a lot of things you can do getting around in those sites is easier especially c sector c1 and c2 are completely close to each other and b site on the other hand is a very rich site i would say there is verticality to it spaces around that site have cover most of the times they do really and because of that at least these three objectives are completely connected to each other again d is a bit closer but speaking about a site a is just completely out of the game most of the times you don't even play in that site and you just completely forget about it however because c sector and b sector are actually closer to each other and kind of feel connected i just like to put this one in decent i really enjoy playing in discarded as well and that's one of the reasons why i just like it to be there next up we've got the flashpoint I wouldn't call Flashpoint a complete disaster because that's not really what it is. However, I do believe it's just an average map. And the reason for that is like ridiculously open spaces and like ridiculous lighting in the map that kind of makes everyone invisible, especially on those hilltops where snipers tend to camp. Sometimes you just die from people that are completely melted into these stones and the stones 
kind of have a yellowish color, as you can see in the video. That is just ridiculous. And the only reason why this map isn't a disaster is because the objectives, most of the times, are connected to each other. For example, C objective, B, D, and we've got also E that are completely connected to each other and they feel like they kind of convey the feeling that you are actually playing a conquest game. So that's why I'm not giving it the disaster tier and I believe the average tier is just okay. Next up, we've got Haven. Haven is the last map that 2042 ever got. And in my opinion, Haven is a decent map actually. The reason for that is from season five on, the map started to become just a bit smaller and the objectives feel like a bit more connected to each other. And they kind of remind you of previous Battlefield titles where maps were actually designed for a normal 64 conquest. Haven has objectives that are completely connected to each other. And I believe the only aspect that holds Haven back from becoming the perfect map is the fact that it really encourages people to camp because there is a lot of houses in this map. People are just swarming in these houses. The camps people make in these houses are completely ridiculous. And that's why this map can't really be a perfect map. I believe the number of houses in this map are completely uh, out of control and it could have been better in that aspect. But all in all, I believe Haven is actually a decent map. Next up, we've got the Hourglass. Hourglass is actually, in my opinion, the most controversial map in the whole 2042. And the reason for that is it was previously just a disaster of a map. Everything felt disconnected. The map was completely separated and it was divided into two parts. Those parts were completely disconnected from each other. It made DICE actually consider reworking this map like all the other all-out warfare maps hourglass also got a rework and the rework on hourglass in my opinion made it so much better to be honest i really enjoy playing in hourglass this version of it previous version was just trash but this version is something that i really enjoy playing especially b site c site and d site are completely connected to each other we can even say that a even a site is connected to them i can't just give anything higher than average to hourglass but i believe Hourglass right now, this version of it, is never a disaster. That's my opinion about this. Next up, we've got the Kaleidoscope. And Kaleidoscope, in my opinion, is a decent map. The reason for that is uh, the sites can actually be connected to each other through the skyscrapers that are built in the map. You can actually go into the elevator, go on top of that skyscraper, and just fall down in any objective that you want. And C Sector has two objectives, C1 and C2 which consists of two skyscrapers that are really close to each other. So these two are completely connected and they make the other objectives connected to each other by making a shortcut, I would say, to get to those objectives. Maybe B side is just a bit off, but there's pros and cons to that B side as well. And in my opinion, can actually be considered a decent map. Next up, we've got the Manifest. Manifest, in my opinion, is the second controversial map in 2042, after Hourglass, of course. And in my opinion, it is still a disaster even after the rework. One of the biggest issues with this map is that every single site, or let's say sector, feels completely disconnected to the other. For example, A sector has two objectives, C sector has two objectives, and we have a B sector with only one objective. B sector is completely out of this map. Sometimes I don't even get to see B sector in a whole match. And that's how ridiculously far away that sector is. And from C sector to A sector, there is just a lot of walking. It's like a walking simulator between those. You have verticality almost anywhere in this map, but that verticality is not going to make these objectives connected to each other. The map just feels off because of that. Because you're constantly just moving from C sector to A sector. And it's like a walking simulator, really. That's my opinion on Manifest. So it is really a disaster. And I believe we can all agree on that. Next up, we've got the Orbital. Orbital, in my opinion, is again, an average one. The reason for that is just like the other average maps, objectives are disconnected from each other most of the times, even from B1 to B2, which are just in a single sector, there's a lot of walking to do. C sector, especially C2, is completely out of the equation for this map and you literally need a light transport to get to those sites. You don't even you don't even have the option to go on top of a site and just fall down. You can't just do that. A1 and A2 are nicely connected in my opinion. Even C1 and C2 are. B1 and B2 are even connected to each other. But when you take a look at the map as a whole, 
none of these sectors are actually connected to each other. And that's the reason why this one is an average one. The only thing that holds this map from becoming a disaster is actually A1 site, which makes it a bit easier to navigate between A sector and B sector. That's the only thing that holds this map from becoming a disaster. Next up, we've got the Reclaimed. In my opinion, Reclaimed is a perfect map. First of all, the map really looks like Zavat from Battlefield 4. It really looks like it. You, you, you can't just deny it. No matter how many times DICE tries to just get away from this question that, hey, were you inspired by Zavat when uh, like designing Reclaimed? No matter how many times they try to deny that, we as Battlefield players know the fact that this map is heavily inspired by Zavat. And the fact that most of the sites in this map are actually connected to each other reminds us of the breakpoint for DICE developers to shift their focus towards 64 player matches. When they did that, Reclaimed came in for season five and it was way smaller and way funnier than any other map before it. And that's what makes Reclaimed a perfect map in my opinion, because it has everything in a single package. Issues with maps before it are completely gone in this map. And that's why I really enjoy playing it. It really feels like the Zavad from Battlefield 4 Days. And not only because it brings me back some nostalgia, but the map in and out itself is really a good one. Moving on to the next one, we've got Redacted here. Redacted is also a perfect map in my opinion. It reminds me of the time that people at DICE actually decided to spend their resources on 64 player matches. And the Redacted, as you guys probably know, is the only infantry only map in 2042. There is not a single vehicle in this map and it's just infantry versus infantry and nothing more. It provides pretty cool close combat, something that 2042 really lacked before uh, announcing this one. We didn't really have anything like it. It kind of feels like the old Metro and old Lucker maps. Not the environment, but the feeling and the chaos kind of reminds me of those two maps. And the map in and out itself is a perfect one. The objectives are uh, well connected and everything feels good about this one. Next up we've got the Spearhead. About Spearhead, I do believe it's a decent map. I know the sites are somehow disconnected, but it's just a case about E sector. Like E1 and E2 are completely separated from the map. However, the other sectors, D sector, C sector, A sector, and B sector are completely connected to each other. And I believe navigating between these sectors is kind of easy and you don't even really need a light transport most of the times the environment looks good there's a lot of open spaces without cover uh but the verticality of the terrain and the topography kind of compensates for that issue and you can't really take cover and hide yourselves uh in places that are naturally built like the environment is naturally built to take cover in and yeah i really enjoy playing in spearhead and I believe Decent is the perfect place for it. Next up, we've got the Stadium. So as you guys probably know, Stadium was previously a part of Hourglass. It just got removed after the rework and it was announced as a new map, as the second new map of Season 7, which wasn't really a new map. But anyways, uh, we're dealing with dice here. We have no other way but to accept this one. And in my opinion, Stadium can't be a disaster only because of one simple reason. And that reason is, it brings chaos in a way that most of the maps really can't. And chaos has always been a part of Battlefield games, especially in maps that are infantry only. And you might say that, yeah, this one is another infantry only map. Why did you say Redacted is the only one? The simple answer to that question is because Stadium wasn't really a new map. To this day, people still don't think it is a proper map. And they have good reasons for it because it was a very small part of a very bigger map. And now it's a completely separate one. And speaking about chaos, the sites in Stadium, in my opinion, are well connected to each other. And that is another aspect that holds Stadium from becoming a disaster map. Stadium, in my opinion, is another average map. So average tier, let's move on. Next one, we've got the Renewal. Renewal is, in my opinion, nowhere near a perfect map, but it is way above average. So I'm just gonna put it in decent and I'll explain why. Well, the reason for that is most of the objectives are well connected to each other. The environment is good. We don't have so many open spaces without cover. There's actually cover. C sector is perfectly placed 
There's tons of places for cover around this sector. The only issue with this map, in my opinion, is D sector, which is completely away from the rest of the map. And if it wasn't for D sector, Renewal could even be a perfect map. But yeah, D sector really holds it back. And in my opinion, Decent is the perfect place for it. Next up, we've got the Stranded. Again, only two objectives in this map are connected to each other. Those objectives are C1 and C2. The rest of the map is completely a disaster. Like they are completely disconnected from each other. If you want to, let's say, go from E to D, you really need a light transport. Otherwise, you're going to have a one minute, two minute walk to just get to that objective. And that is very bad because Stranded is one of the original maps of 2042 and it was literally made to host 128 players. And that's why there's just tons of places, tons of spaces without even having a single cover, without taking into consideration going from one side to another. The whole map is just a disaster. However, C1 and C2 actually saved this map from becoming a real one. And in my opinion, it is after all an average map because of this sector. Like C sector really saves this map from becoming a disaster. So last but not least, we've got the exposure. Exposure, in my opinion, is a disaster. Let's call it a disaster, ladies and gentlemen. And the reason for that is very simple. Like every other map in 2042, exposure has a lot of open terrain and useless open terrain, I would say. And on top of that, every single site is disconnected to the other one. Like if you remove B sector from this map, you have D site, C site, and A site. You have like 600 meters of walking if you want to get from one site to the other. And that's really a shame in making a map, which is just ridiculous. In my opinion, Exposure was made to play Sundance and use that wingsuit. Like there's no sense in parachuting from A to let's say C and be sniped by like 10 people at the same time. And because of all that, I believe Exposure is just a disaster. In my opinion, it is even worse than Manifest. So to take a final look at the tier list, we have Reclaimed and Redacted as the perfect maps here. In the whole 15 maps of 2042, the only two perfect maps, in my opinion, are Redacted and Reclaimed. For decent maps, we have Discarded, Haven, Kaleidoscope, Renewal, and Spearhead. The average maps are Breakaway, Flashpoint, Hourglass, Orbital, Stadium, and Stranded. And the disaster maps are Exposure and Manifest. As I said, this tier list is made completely on my own experience. You guys probably don't agree on some of my choices. And because of that, I encourage you all to go down in the comment section. Let me know what you think. And hope you enjoyed the video, guys. And thanks for watching. Until next time, stay cool.